All right, right now we are on chapter four, section four, dealing with transformations with matrices. On problem number one, <coughs> excuse me, we have four coordinates. We have coordinate W, X, Y, and Z. They're all in ordered pairs. Jacob, could you tell me the coordinate for W? W is a negative three, two. Negative three, two. How about X? X is a negative two, four. Y? Four, one. And Z? It is three, two. Okay. <clears throat> this is how you write a vertex matrix for ordered pairs. I want you guys to understand. All of your X values are on top. All of your Y values are on the bottom. So if you're ever asked to do a vertex matrix with matrices, with ordered pairs, put the X's on top and the Y's on the bottom. That's how you organize it. All right. This is W. That's X. That's Y. That's Z. Go ahead and go ahead and plot these while you guys are writing that down. Negative three, two. Negative two, four. Four, one. And three, zero. Once you plot them, go ahead and get your rulers out. Connect them. And that right there, this is what's referred to everybody as your pre-image. So if you ever see, it says graph the pre-image, this is what we're starting with. That's before we actually transform it or move it. Obviously there's lots of different ways to move it. You can translate it, you can rotate it, you can dilate it. Alright? You can rotation, dilation, rotation. Alright. Oh, reflection. There we go. Don't forget reflection. So we're going to do it all with matrices this time. Now, problem number one, it tells us to translate one unit left and three units down. But question number one says, could you please write the translation matrix. We're going to write the translation matrix that goes with this problem. Translation matrices are always added to the pre-image. Now, if you're going one unit to the left, what's that dealing with? That's dealing with your X's going one unit to the left. If you're going three units down, that's dealing with your Y's going three units down. How many coordinates are we dealing with? We're dealing with how many? Four coordinates. So you guys need to build a translation matrix that deals with four coordinates. What are we doing to the W, the X, the Y, and the Z? We are going one unit left along the X's, and we're going three units down with the Y values. By the way, this is the answer to number one. This is the translation matrix for this problem. Okay? What are we going to do with this translation matrix? We're going to take this information, we're going to add it to our pre-image to get our final image. And we'll do that in green. So will be the answer to number two. Okay. Number two asks. Find the coordinates of quadrilateral W prime, X prime, Y prime, Z prime. So we're going to find W prime, X prime, Y prime, Z prime, and I'm going to put it in the form of a matrix. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to add this matrix and this matrix together. So what's negative 3? Minus 1 more. That's a negative 4. Negative 2 and a negative 1 makes a negative 3. 4 minus 1 is just a 3. 3 minus 1, 2. So what we've done is we just take all these x values and added it to all of those. Okay? Now we're going to take negative 3 and add it to all of these right here. The 2, the 4, the 1, the 0. 2 minus 3, negative 1. 4 minus 3, 1. 1 minus 3, negative 2. And finally 0 minus 3 is a Negative three. This is your answer for number two. That's W prime, X prime, Y prime, Z prime. 
the final thing I'd like you to do is take these coordinates. Remember, this is your this represents your x values, that represents your y values. Take those and plot them on your page. Negative four, negative one, right there. There's my w coordinate. Negative three, positive one. Right there, there's my x prime. Over three, down negative two. That's my y prime. And final, two, negative three. That's my z prime. And if you do this correctly, what should happen to all of your points? They should all go over one to the left and down three. One to the left, down three. One to the left, down three. One to the left, down three. Okay. You've done transformations before, but we're doing trans translations and transformations with matrices now. Okay. So all we need to do is take the translation matrix and add it to your original image. So what can happen is without having to graph it, you can find the coordinates without having to, to graph it out for your left. Okay. So the last thing I want you to do is just shade in that final image so I know that you are done. What are the three coordinates for the triangle? I have an R, I have an S, and a T. But I need the three coordinates so I can build my vertex matrix. Help me out, Zach. What's R? Uh, six, two. Six, two. What's S? Negative three. Three. Negative three. And T? Negative two, five. Negative two, five. So right now, we're going to go and just take these right here. Remember, that's the vertex matrix. By the way, Jacob, could you read out question number four? What does it say? Right, the coordinates. Okay, good. That means this answer is number four right here. That's your answer number four. <laughs> Alright, the next part of this, question number five, it says we need to find R prime, S prime, and T prime. Well, we read the problem and it says we need to create a triangle that is dilated, keyword dilated, so that the perimeter is one half of the original perimeter. So what I want you guys to do right now is I want you to take the original coordinates and I want you to put a scalar of a half next to the matrix. So we're going to take half of all these numbers, and that will create a triangle that has half the perimeter of the original. So we're going to do half of 6, half of 3, half of negative 2, half of 2, half of negative 3, half of 5. There's your answer for number 5. We had to create a perimeter that's half the original. So I want you to plot these points. Now when you plot the points, make sure you label it R prime, S prime, and T prime. Now I'm going to connect dots. My final image. I'm going to shade it in. Now, I want you to notice something here, all right? The perimeter, if we actually used the Pythagorean theorem and measured the perimeter, the perimeter would be half of the original. But the area is not half. The area is actually a quarter, a quarter of its original size. Because if you have, the, how do you find the area of a triangle? Base times height divided by 2? Well, if you have the base and you have the height, you actually now have a fourth of the original size. Okay, so something that's interesting you can check dealing with dilations. Watch from the origin. When I take from the origin and I connect it to R, what does it pass through? It passes through R prime. If I go from the origin and go through S, or all the way to S, it goes through S prime. And if you go all the way to T, it should go through T prime. Now I don't know if you guys can see this, but can you guys see from right here, this origin, R prime. You see how that's like half the distance? Alright? So what is R prime? R prime is actually the midpoint between the origin 
and the original vertex R. That's how you can check your work. All of these, R prime, T prime, and S prime should all be what? They should all be midpoints between the original coordinate and which point? The origin. Now we're done with problems four, five, and six, because problem number six must be graphic. We just finished graphing. All right, problem number seven, we have a quadrilateral, A, B, C, D. Brooklyn, help me out with the coordinates here. What's A? Negative three, two. Negative three, two. How about B? Zero, three. Okay, zero, three, C. Four, 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 and D. Negative two, negative two. All right, go ahead and plot those right here on your page. All right, once you finish plotting them, go ahead and connect the dots. It's going to be our quadrilateral. Now, number eight asks for a matrix that deals with a reflection across the y axis. So there's a specific <coughs> matrix, a two by two matrix, that you can take to any set of ordered pairs and multiply this matrix to that, and it'll give you the new coordinates, okay? And that matrix is, is it negative one, zero, zero, one. That is the answer to number eight, because on number eight it says, Write the reflection matrix for this situation. And this is the reflection matrix for this situation, because in this particular case, we're going across the y-axis. Okay? So when it asks you for a particular matrix, this is where everybody, you go to your, go to your table. All right? And ours was a reflection across the y-axis. That's why I chose this particular matrix. All right, so now we're here. Now go to your journal right now, and I want you guys to practice something in your journal. This is the only problem we're going to do in your journal. Okay? Now you're going to take negative 1, 0, 0, and 1, and you're going to multiply it to your A, B, C, D. All right? A was at negative 3, 2. We had at 0, 3, 4, negative 4, and negative 2, negative 2. I'm only going to use two colors right now. I'm going to highlight both rows, and then I'm going to highlight every single column. The reason we're allowed to multiply these together is because this is a 2 by 2, and this is a 2 by 4. And because these match, you're allowed to what? You're allowed to multiply. What's our final result going to be? It's going to be a, another 2 by Four. You can only multiply, everybody, you can only multiply these two by twos on the left side, not the, not the right side. Okay? Now, the process is we have to take what? We have to take the first number, right? And multiply it to the first number and the second number times the second number. But what's the second number always going to be multiplied? Whether it's the 2, the 3, the negative 4, the negative 2. The second number is always multiplied by 0. So I'm not going to do it. Because it's just going to be nothing anyways. So we're going to take negative 1 and multiply it to all the top numbers. And that's going to be the new coordinates that I'm going to need. So we're going to take negative 1 and multiply it to the negative 3 and get a positive 3. Negative 1 times 0 still stays 0. Negative 1 times 4 is a negative 4. And negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2. Now, if we continue this pattern, this 0 is going to be multiplied to all the numbers in the top part, which is going to cancel out all these numbers because anything times 0 is 0. So this 1 is going to be multiplied to all the numbers that are in the second or the bottom the bottom row here, okay? So we're going to be left with a what? A 2, a 3, a negative 4, and a negative 2. So these numbers in the bottom row just stay the same. The top row, we multiplied everything by a negative 1. Now, everybody, this is your A prime. This is your B prime. This is your C prime. This is your D prime. I'm going to take these ordered pairs right here, and I'm going to plot them. Here is A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime, and then you're just going to shade 
this in for your final inch. And there you have it.